Hi guys, Con here, and you are looking at the instrument cluster of my E39. Now I'm going to turn the ignition on, and you can see from this row of displays, right? Okay, now the E39 has two different grade of instrument clusters. So mine here is the higher grade instrument cluster, and when you press this body control button, this onboard computer button, you will see all these uh, features, all these uh, data being being flashed across the screen okay uh, I think I've mentioned earlier in a previous video there is a lower spec uh, instrument cluster all right that does not that also have all the also has all these features but don't show them in uh, in such detail all right and uh, that one has uh, has a little graphic here that shows you know like a top view of the car and that one actually has a uh, it that displays okay when which door is open which door is closed and all that but this one doesn't have that it doesn't even have a light to show that your door is open basically what happens is that if you drive off uh, with any one of the doors open then it will just flash a text here say door open so in this video uh, I'm going to show you actually okay how to unlock okay a hidden series of diagnostic menus uh, that you can access uh, through the instrument cluster. So this high, uh, what they call the high OBC, all right, has two buttons, all right. This button here is to reset the trip meter, and this button here accesses the the check control, all right. So let me just turn the engine off. So when I press this now, it says check control OK means that uh, all the car, there are no uh, fault codes running in the car. So in order to access these menus, I need to press this right button here. When it says check control OK, I'll turn the key and it shows here test number one. So to enter all these tests, right, once I'm in that test, I press the left button. The, uh, what, that, that, that's the uh, what, trip meter reset button. So this first item here, this is my chassis number, all right? Uh, and then this is what they call the K number. Nobody seems to have figured out what this number is for. Okay, this one is the part number of this specific instrument cluster. So uh, if you go to a spare part shop, you want to buy B this grade of BMW instrument cluster for the E39, this is the part number 6914884. Uh, this is, well, some software related uh, code, which not important. This is the date of manufacture of this car. And uh, this apparently, this is hardware version number. That is the software version number. And uh, this display here, this number here, 6 shows the number of cylinders. So in this case, this is a 6-cylinder car. Not quite sure what M and S they're supposed to mean. Uh, this is another, well, inconsequential number that, well, at least not, not, not any specific info that we are interested in. So this uh, array of numbers, right, that I am told, uh, I understand that they follow the instrument cluster. So if, let's say, you have swapped... Okay, uh, a set of instrument clusters for, for an, from another car, uh, it would probably show, demo, show the uh, info of that other car. Now, we go on to test number two. Ah, this is the one that a lot of people like to show off. You see, ah, watch this. So when you activate test number two, basically it just sweeps through all the gauges, uh, lights up all the warning lights, indicator lights and all that. I believe this is a test use uh, just to you know to in, to show the fun the function to, as a diagnostic of whether the instrument cluster is working well whether all the warning lights are in working order okay so now we move on to test number three now test number three when you press this ah so when you when you see here it means that the menu is locked now a lot of uh, online sources all right uh, tell you you have to go to test 19 but I've discovered that you can actually do this. You can unlock this, all right? So when this, what you need to do is you need to keep pressing this number, all right, until it shows the full sum of your chassis, of the last five digits of the chassis number. So in this case, if you remember, my chassis number was BZ56471. So 5 plus 6 plus 4 plus 7 plus 1 is 23. That is how I unlock the, num the code. I press this. So it will... Come back to test one, right? And let me just jump now to test three. Okay, so SIL, SI is a service indicator. So 
Here, this represents the number of liters of fuel used uh, since I last serviced the car. And uh, 166 seems about right, all right, because uh, ever since I serviced the car at Wurns until now, I think I've refueled this car twice at most three times, about fifty liters. Yeah, 50, about fifty liters each. So this is thereabouts correct. All right, and move on. So this is the number of days since I last serviced the car. Forty-one days ago. Yep, that's about right. Okay. Now we advance to test number four. Now, this is the inst uh, instantaneous fuel consumption in liters per 100 kilometer in liters per hour. Now, we advance to test number five. Now, uh, this is the fuel consumption, all right, that is used to calculate the remaining range. So, this is the uh, remaining range as calculated by the trip computer. The is, is, it projects a remaining range of 385 kilometers, which is calculated based on this average. Now, you notice that this average is different from the one that, that my trip computer here is showing. So, I believe this average uh, is calculated and it's much lower. Okay, you notice it's much lower. I believe this average number is calculated against... Um, is it excludes moments when the car is sitting idle, all right? So, it calculates your car's average average consumption on the move but i believe like that's what i believe okay and so we move on to the next one test number six now this is uh this is a uh, to show you the amount of fuel the exact amount of fuel left in the car and from what you can see here it tallies okay so this is the left fuel sensor this is the right fuel sensor and apparently how and this is the total amount of fuel left in the car, 48.4 liters. Thereabout correlates with the fuel gauge. So these two halves of the tank add up, get 48.4 liters left in the tank. This one, it's, it shows what tank average, 46 liters, phase one. Not quite sure what that means, but we'll move on. So this is test number seven. This is another critical, crucial one to use, a useful one. So care temp, this is the coolant temperature, 80 degrees Celsius. Now, uh, I just drove this car not too long ago. And as you can see, the temperature gauge there shows that uh, this car is in operating temperature. And now I think the car has been stopped for what? Maybe half an hour, one hour. And you can see the coolant temperature is dropping. All right. This is your engine revs. R this, is, this is your engine RPM. Okay. And this one is the ambient temperature. Now, interestingly, uh, I'm not sure why that this ambient temperature does not read the same uh, external temperature as shown here. So maybe these two temperature readings are taken from different sensors. This is probably from the cli climate control. This is from the en from somewhere within the engine where it is warmer. So now we advance to test number eight. So this is the this apparently is the vehicle the the speed that they will display on the speedometer and this is what is supposed to be the vehicle's actual speed. So later on I'm going to to be to try this on the move to see what is the difference. Okay, now we come to test number 9. This is another useful test. This shows me the uh, battery, vo the voltage of the battery. So those are, and this is especially useful if those, if you know that your battery is uh, starting to run low, this is a good test to monitor the uh, current voltage of your battery. Now I advance to test 10. Now this is, uh, this is, this actually shows you what uh, market this car is supposed to be from apparently. Uh, some if let's say like if it's US market, I understand the number it will be O2. Um well I guess this shows that for at that time BMW spec similar cars for both Malaysia and Australia. All right, and apparently uh, I can I think this makes sense too because uh, during the time of the BMW F10 before the two liter N20 engine was launched, Malaysia was one of the few markets worldwide that had the N52 six-cylinder engines for the F10. 
Australia was the other one and Malaysia and Australia both are sim- both being right-hand drive markets. So from BMW HQ perspective, it may make sense for them to just spec Malaysia and Australian cars identically in terms of their uh, mechanical makeup. Okay, so now we move on. Now, test number 11 just shows me these random numbers which, well, I have no idea what they mean. So I'm not going to explore further. No no online source have been able to, to give me any answers, right? So this one is your is my average speed. And this is the this is supposed to be an ETA function, which I've demonstrated earlier in my in another video. Alright, uh, do watch that. Okay, so you can you can actually what you can do is you can use the, the E39 strip computer to set to tell the car, okay, I'm gonna travel say 40 or 50 kilometers per hour, uh, uh 40 or 50 kilometers distance, and the car will calculate based on your average speed how long will it take for you to reach your destination. Okay, of course, this does not. This calculation does not. Uh, what you call it, uh, Does not in uh, take into account traffic conditions. So this is a test of the all the all the beeping sounds and the alarms. So we move on to test 14. Now this test 14 is also interesting. This uh, this test here actually helps you to, to, to flush out the various whatever fault codes that is reading in the ECU. Now this the, the double digit uh, the double digits are fault codes and the triple digits are the frequency in which those fault codes have uh, have surfaced. So I would see it would seem that you know this car okay i i'm not 100 percent sure if i'm correct in this but those were some of the fault codes that the ecu has but uh it has been purged or yeah so probably at the last service this were all uh fixed and we move on to test number 15 so you just show all this this one i, I neither do i have any idea what this means it doesn't seem significant so we will move on Test number 16. This is your oil temperature. I believe engine oil temperature. Test number 17. Not quite sure what this is for either. Test 18. Well, this test is, is not utilized. And test number 19 is if you decide you you want you you can, you can use you can press this button to lock everything up again and go to test number 20 this 1000 this kvbr apparently this is the uh number used the car uses to calculate and correct for the cars uh to correct the cars fuel consumption uh calculations so test number 21 is the option to reset. Right, so right now, I'm going back to test number nine. Right, okay. And so this is the battery right now. I'm gonna show you as I start the car. So at that moment in time, you see the the temp the uh, sorry the battery voltage dropped a little, and now that the engine is running, the the voltage climbed out. That was a function that I that I activated in the car. So every time on the hour, the car would just issue these three beeps to tell me that you know the clock is turning five o'clock, six o'clock, seven o'clock, and all that. All right, guys. So uh, right now I have attached a GoPro on my windscreen, and I'm going to take a the car out for a drive and to illustrate to show some of these features on the move so right now i am stationed idle and the car seems to be averaging fuel consumption of about two liters per hour okay so now i'm going on the move or i just powering out slowly in the confines of my residential area so now let's switch to the fuel consumption in terms of distance per 100 kilometer oh my this is a scary these are scary numbers man so uh yep well the numbers from what i see it seems to match 
the uh, analog ones okay so this is the instantaneous fuel consumption now that I'm just coasting along it is showing me about five point something liters per hundred kilometer so now I move on now that's where you see the numbers just climb let me just go back to liters per hour So yeah, so apparent so from what you can see right the base the minimum fuel consumption of this car at any time whether you're idle or moving is at a minimum of two liters per hour. So I'm gonna ad advance to test number seven. Now you see the coolant temperature is about 98 degrees Celsius, which um, well it's stable. So it's stable. Apparently in some markets, uh in overseas markets like you know in uh, in European climate or American climate for example the normal is about 70 to 80 but here in Malaysia we are living in tropical climate so a bit higher is uh, is all right but here this uh, this gauge here shows you see the thing apparently I've been told right this the temperature gauge of the E39 is buffered you know so it even though it points straight up right it is this actually representative of a wide range of possible temperatures so um, as we all know, the E39's cooling system is a weakness of this car. So it is a good idea, all right, uh, to always, to every occasionally, uh, activate this particular test, uh, run the car around, and see how the temperature fluctuates. I think it is especially useful. This is especially useful if I were to take this car on a Gunting run. I'll probably set my trip computer to show me the coolant temperature just to ensure that you know everything is stable so I'll just advance to the next feature so this one reads the engine RPM not sure why you need a digital readout of the engine RPM okay, but here you go and so here is the ambient ah, now the ambient temperature and the above temperature reading here matches so interest i'm quite so i'm curious to know whether this reads off the same sensor or these two read off from the same sensor or from separate sensors so here i'm showing you the speedometer reading versus the digital speedometer reading and from what i can observe there seems to be a bit of a fluctuation. It's not an exact tally between the, the analog and the digital speedometer, but not significantly. So let me just switch to what's supposed to be the actual speed out readout. Huh? This seems to match the, the reading more closely. Okay, so another test that I am running now, I'm driving on a straight line. So I am going to show you my ways. Okay, I hope you. I hope the the, cat, the the GoPro captures it. So from what is shown here, the V, this V actual seems to tally not uh, not too far off from the ways reading. So now I'm holding a steady 45, 40. Yeah. So it's the difference is about what two or three kilometers per hour so now you can see from here right uh, well quite f doesn't fully tally you know the number on the on the instrument cluster and hey it matches okay so this seems this V here seems to be the more uh, accurate number when com when uh, when measured against ways right So um, I'll just pause the recording for a while and uh, I'm going to move to a longer stretch of road to try this again. I'm traveling along a straight uh, straight road and compare the reading on the speedometer versus what I have on Waze. Pretty close match. So I believe this is more likely to be the actual uh, speed, whereas V ends here is 
more likely to be the, the speed that is being shown on the speedometer now this is not uncommon because you see uh, mo generally most car makers right will get their speedometer to overread a little okay just as a little precaution to keep the driver on the legal side of the speed limit all right guys so these hidden menus of tests right uh, once you unlock them one time it stays unlocked but um of course, every time when you change battery, you reset your service indicators, apparently uh, the test goes back itself to lock mode. All right. So you can, but you can just very easily repeat the same procedures to unlock them again. Now, if for whatever reason you choose to want to lock them again, very simple, go to test 19, press this lock off, press this again, and all the menus are locked. Okay. Plain and simple. So um, all... You know, all the various functions are available in this hidden test menus have been unearthed over the last 10 years or so by very um, resourceful E39 owners as well as workshop owners. And uh, they have all shared their, their findings on the internet. I've based whatever I said on my video on those findings. I'll be sharing the links, okay, to a few of these websites that I referred to in the description section below. Hey guys, um, Christmas is coming soon, and a few, a couple of months after that will be Chinese New Year. So during that time, uh, I'm sure we like to have, you know, top up some cookies in our household. So um, my wife and I, we are selling a bottle of these uh, conflict cookies for twenty five ringgit each. All right, these are conflict cookies. Uh, I'm told that. Okay, they are not gluten free so those of you with diet restrictions watch out for that they are not gluten free we use eggs in the in the making of these cookies uh, but no preservatives so tastes good healthy stuff um, follow the instructions in the description section below uh, if you're interested to order all right guys hope you enjoyed today's video if you like my content click on the subscribe button uh, press the bell icon to toggle the frequency of updates every time i upload a new video and uh, don't forget also to check out the channels of bobby bing and fadil okay of the horizon team and until my next video thanks for watching bye for now